Hey guys, what's up? This is Marie with Swipe in the City. Uh, here for kind of a late episode this week, but we needed some time to process the topic. Um, joined by... Uh, hey guys, I'm Brooke. Um, I'm a friend of Marie's and also finishing up um, my uh, master's degree uh, to be a therapist. I'm working on my sex therapy certification too, so... So this is my second semester as a counseling intern, so I'm here to bring all the hottest of hot takes. <laughs> the actual expert in the room. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Andrew. Um, I'm just happy to be here. How could I follow up such a great intro? That's, that's what we have. <laughs> and there you have it. And so we, we watched The Bachelor together. This is The Bachelor crew. Oh. Batch is my NFL, I gotta be honest. I get it's no longer a joke. Uh yeah. Um, what can I say? I go I go hype for it. We should do a bracket for the next one. I Speaking of love NFL. to do a fantasy bracket. Mm. All right, well it's decided. Anybody who wants to join the bracket <laughs> <laughs> We we take the bachelor very seriously. Um Constant shit given. Yes. Constant shit given. I mean, you don't watch it because you think it's good. You watch it because it's trash and it's fun to talk about and uh, it can blow your mind. I mean, it. Uh, we've already touched on as we were like kind of preparing for this a lot of interesting takeaways and discussion topics. It gets people talking. That's half the fun, right? Yeah. It's like surprising you see like all of these like I feel like cultural tropes that you think are like so antiquated and then you just like see how common they are and you're like okay we're doing this <laughs> got it okay okay so you look so good with your beer over there by the way oh thank you <laughs> I love the very elegant holding of the wine it makes me feel uncultured by <laughs> You don't actually, like if there were a sim per yeah. se, you don't want to uh, get your body heat on, on the wine. No, just fingertips. Yes. We're all fingertips. Only, yeah. only fingertips. I'm just always scared I'm going to drop it. So I just like kind of grab it however I'm going to grab it. I'm scared to drink things with stems because I'm scared I'm going to break It's a lot of responsibility. It is. It yeah. is. I'm not, I'm not quite adult enough for that, but... We're learning a lot about our friends tonight. All, all, we all digress. Time. If I get into Marie trivia, I'll win. I <laughs> know like stems. Got it. I'll log away. Sweet. Oh, man. So so where do we start in terms of recapping this shit show couple of days? Like, where did... Oh, so we left off with Susie. Susie, yeah. Do we think... Susie, uh, okay, so when when is it okay to take someone back? Yeah. Did she had taken Clayton back? What do you think? Well, so anybody who didn't watch, like, she kind of had this whole thing at their fantasy suite date and told him that if he'd slept with one of the girls or told any of the other girls that he loved them, that she was out. And he was... He didn't really handle it super well, but we can get into that later. Um, and it ended up being this whole thing, and, and she left, and spoiler alert, she took him back. <laughs> yeah. You're quiet over there, Andrew. I, yeah, I just... W was anything gained through the process? I mean, did he... <laughs> my My struggle is that you spend weeks and weeks watching this happen. You watch everything unfold. And then despite what we all watched take place, the, the ending seemed, the, the outcome seemed unchanged, which feels unfulfilling to me, not only from a spectator's perspective, but like for all of their personal journeys. What do you mean the outcome feels like unchanged? What do you mean? So I think, you know, I think the ultimate goal after watching him tell three different women he loved them and then just <laughs> absolutely shitting all over it shitting all over that and then bungling what whatever you could construe as like a reasonable response he did terrible at, at all of that <laughs> um, but it was 
it's very frustrating to watch that despite all of those choices, the end result is still that Clayton got what he wanted mm. at the expense of all three of those people. And one of those people, despite all of those things, still came back into the fold. Ended up sitting on the couch next to him, answering questions on his behalf in a very strange way that <laughs> I think we can unpack later. But it just... it 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 felt like a regression from everything we had watched for the, the prior three episodes. What would have been a more satisfying ending? Oh, he should have ended up alone. He should have, <laughs> he should have, he should have came out and sat on that couch alone and, and atoned for the mistakes he made. I, I, I would have... I would have respected him a lot more and respected the outcome of the entire experience a lot mm. more had he come out and sat there and said, look, this is, I, this is my bed. I have to lay in it now. But that's not how it ended. It ended with a, a beautiful, glamorous shot of Susie looking great, walking out does. on stage in slow motion to raucous applause as she then sat and... I love, I love how they coached her, but walk back and forth with your gold heels so mm -hmm. you can film your feet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah, I thought, like, I was kind of hoping the lesson learned here would be, like, a fuckboy corrected. You know, like, oh, you mm. will be held to accountability. You know, you, you have to learn to put yourself in other shoes. You have to learn that your actions affect other people. And also that love means, like, putting others before yourself, even when it might hurt you because you care more about their well-being than you, your selfish wants. But like Rachel made the great point of, this is the first apology that she got and is on live television. It was months later. So if it was really a fuckboy corrected, wouldn't he have like reached out and really made amends to her? And the fact that he didn't was just, uh, yeah, I kind of, it didn't sell it for me. Agreed. I, I think any any small modicum of progress you think he may have made through that experience, for me, was completely undone the second she walked out, sat next to him, and, and then proceeded to kind of publicly pre-refute the, the criticism she thought they would receive. It just, it, mm -hmm. it felt very unearned and... Yeah, if, if the point was for it to be a, a fuckboy corrected, somebody who learned, <laughs> I just, I don't feel like we got... It's like girl interrupted, fuckboy interrupted. <laughs> yes, yeah, fuckboy corrected is like a perfect... I just, yeah, it, it felt it felt unearned, I think is the best way yeah. to explain that. And I hate the whole, like, I'm learning to be a better man every day. I feel like that's just like... PR buzzwords that I hear like so many people in public I'm using and it's so annoying it's just like okay like let's see you walk the walk then well that was like I mean the whole show all he did was use bachelor buzzwords like I mean yeah let's, let's face it how much can he really speak for himself <laughs> clearly like, not at all because he, he I feel like there were about five lines of dialogue that he either chopped up and mixed in one way or another but mm -hmm. If, if I had to hear him say, I'm trying to bring my walls down, or this journey has been an experience, or the really lame ways he said, look, I, I wish I could say more than I'm sorry, but that's all I can say, is an absolute cop-out, and a 13-year-old could yeah. externalize their emotions and their feelings better than, I'm sorry, and that's the best I can give you right now, it just... Yeah, every, every yeah. like, the time they're like, wow, your words mean so much. It was just, like, basic decency. And mm -hmm. I was just like, uh, okay. And also, like, the other thing is, like, I feel like uh, people were really commenting a lot about, like, how stoic he was. And whenever any of the women were, like, pulling, like pouring their hearts out or being vulnerable. And now, after seeing him put Susie in the car without shedding a single tear, yeah. it's like, were you really, like, emotionally invested in any of these I mean, okay, I think he clearly was, but... He, he showed more emotion with Susie than he did the entire, like, every other girl on the season combined. Yeah. I will say one thing that he did well um, is he was a really good listener, like, throughout the show. I don't think he, like, he didn't interrupt people. 
and he like repeated back that like he heard what they said um you know was he just saying that he heard it to kind of like move through it to like kind of get points and win like win the conversation like that's another <laughs> story but you know he like throughout this season like he really like heard people out now whether he listened in terms of like you know when it went back to the whole like Shanae situation <laughs> that's another story but uh I'll give him that he he doesn't interrupt people. I guess that's the bar is so low. I, 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 yeah, the yeah, bar is very say, low. The standards are low. I, I I think there's definitely a distinction between listening and internalizing, and I think he was a great listener, but an absolute shit internalizer. Mm-hmm. And I think that's clear from his. I mean, he has a distinct lack of of emotional intelligence. I was like literally just going to say that. His, the EQ that man has is measured in like decimal points. <laughs> and I I think it's just, it's tragic to be an audience watching. I, Rachel's the one I go back to because I think she really, um, of, of all of the, I say all of the, of the, of the final three women, like very clearly was able to articulate the emotional side of things. Mm-hmm. I think I think yeah. Gabby was very good at articulating the the factual points of like the situation that yeah. they were in. And I have to give Gabby a ton of points. I will be the first to admit I had her pegged as Didn't her see it as her fantastic grandfather said, a dingbat for sure. <laughs> But she really showed up at the end. And her clap back was so good. Mm-hmm. It was spot on. I agree with everything that she said. Absolutely. And, and it, was, it was coherent. It was articulate. It was mm-hmm. concise. And there was no word that she said that you could argue with. Well, and then at the very end of that whole, like, when he was breaking up with her, well, when he was following up on the breakup, when he <laughs> broke up with both of them together... Um, she was like so pissed and the fact that he was like, can I walk you out? And she was like, no. And like got up and walked herself to the car. Like I have fucking mad respect for that. Mm -hmm. Like that is a bad bitch. I'm excited to see. Well, (laughs) we'll get to that later. (laughs) Yeah. I no, I totally agree with what y'all are saying. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there wasn't, uh, back to the other point, I guess, a lot of active, like, listening. It wasn't really, mm-hmm. like you're saying, it wasn't really registering. And, you know, just because you can be respectful and not talk over someone is, like, not saying so much. <laughs> um, Low bar. It's so sad when it gets to that point, though, right? Ugh. Yeah. Um, so... Okay, so part of the reason that they got in such a, like, riff, him and Susie, was, like, the timing, right? Like, Mm -hmm. she didn't tell him prior to the fantasy suite, and she had the last fantasy suite date. She didn't tell him prior that that was her deal breaker. And so it seemed like he felt a little betrayed by that, in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you guys think in terms of, like, should she wait? Should she have waited or like, what do you do in that situation? I feel, I feel pretty confident saying that it was a, it was a poor choice to not communicate those expectations up front. I don't think that absolves Clayton (laughs) of any of the decisions he made afterwards, but I think in a vacuum, it's fair to say that that was not a realistic expectation to set on the relationship. Um, I would like to pose a question in this vein, though, to both of you. Oh, juice. If, if Susie juice. were, if, if Susie had the first Fantasy Suites night, do we think this would have gone in a completely different direction? Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Well, I think she, right? Because I think it got brought up that she didn't have the way that the show was structured or whatever, she didn't have time to have that conversation. Now you can argue she should have had that much earlier regardless, but you know, as it was coming like, Oh, I'm actually reaching this point of the show. I need to bring this up. You know, it was brought up somewhere that she didn't really quite have the time, but had she had the first fantasy suite that probably would have come up like, 
hey, by the way, yeah. this is how I feel as we're talking about whether we should sleep together to, or not tonight. Well, I mean, I think kind of to, I don't know what you might be alluding to, Andrew, is like, would he, would they have had that conversation? Would that have just ended the season right there? I mean, that's what I'm kind of wondering. I mm. I have to give Clayton some credit here because he, he mentioned this in the very, the very poor response he gave after Susie mentioned this to him during their date. I mean, he said himself, had you mentioned this to me earlier, this would have gone to, I, you know, I would have never done that. I tend to believe what he's saying in that moment. And I truly think that had she gone first, had they had that conversation, I don't think he it would have got, I, I don't think it would have gone that far with Rachel or but, Gabby. But also like in that, in that other vein, like, right. Like if he knew like, Oh, if you had told me sooner, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have done that because he knew that he said he loved her the most then why did he end up sleeping with these other women that he knew he wasn't going to end up picking if he was leaning towards her the most? Because he wanted to have sex. He wanted to get his dick wet. I, well, I don't know if it's that simple. <laughs> I, I think that's part of it. But I, after watching the way that he strung both Gabby and Rachel yeah. along after the fact, I truly think it's more of a like he wanted to have his cake and eat it too scenario where he didn't want to have to make that decision until he was forced to, which mm -hmm. I don't think was fair for him to do. And if he felt the way he consistently claimed about Susie, he he could have chosen to make that decision independently before sleeping with either of them. And and he chose not to do that. Well, uh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, like, we've all talked about, like, too, how he's kind of insecure. He, he reeks these, like... Every time a girl would say that they were remotely interested in him, it was like his face lit up in a way that I feel like somebody who's confident in themselves, like, yeah, you're happy to hear that, but it was like you don't Christmas need the, every time. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't need that validation when you're like confident in your own skin. And like, he definitely needed that validation from all of them. So I do think that that played a role too. Like, maybe not necessarily like, completely using sex to like validate himself but at least the like i love yous i think he was certainly intoxicated on lust the not only <laughs> lust but the in the affection mm -hmm. and the infatuation that he received from not only the three of them but throughout Everyone. the whole season yeah all of these women he was he was drunk on that <laughs> validation yeah, he loves the attention. I mean, I also think it's like, it felt like he wanted to explore everything and have all the information to see if anything would, like, change his decision to have a, like, final confirmation by doing that, like, to know. But it kind of just serves to Gabby's point, which she was telling him off, of, like, like, now you're, like, what's the difference between the rose ceremony and then you're putting through us, like, through the same thing again? So now it's just that it's in your hands and you have the power. So yeah. it's easier as opposed to we were rejecting you and it just didn't feel good. And so you didn't like that. So you did anything you could just stop that. And it kind of like, yeah, it brings me back to her point that she made. Yeah, she hit the nail on that with that for sure. I do feel though that like, I do think that he could have used much more discretion. I agree that like, while it's 100% possible to love three people at once, like, I don't think there's any question about that. Or to have serious romantic, like, attraction or feeling, and he could have, like, you, you know, used that better discretion, knowing that he would have had to pick someone. He's not going to end up in a polyamorous relationship with all three of these people, right? <laughs> but, um... That would I, be a twist. I do think that, like, experiencing and developing intense feelings, like, I don't doubt that Clayton had feelings for all three of these women. I just think that, like... He has zero experience dating and is was just like so inexperienced and have a skill set to like he wasn't really good at uh, I don't know like treating people as respectfully as he should <laughs> and I don't want to give him like like you should be able to do that no matter what and I think like having I don't know he dated someone in college so it's like I don't know have you even like been in love before do you know what that means. Have, do you have other experiences to compare it to? Like, 
I just think he got so lost in the sauce of not knowing what the fuck he mm-hmm. was doing that, like, I think, like, the power of, like, ambivalence is just so strong. And, like, the, I don't know if you've heard of, like, the tension of opposites when you have, like, in this case, three decisions and each one of them, like, if your life is going to look so different and you're also yeah. holding in your hands these strong feelings for three people and it's all so new and you don't really have much of a timeline to like see how it develops and there you have to make a decision so quickly that like you feel all these things and you're holding them in all of your hands at the same time and knowing which one is stronger it's just like emotionally hard to take a step back and so I could see it being I mean and all the contestants like when they go and they meet Neil Lane they are like trying to pick out the ring and they're they go, I have no idea who I'm going to pick. That happens yeah. in like almost every season. They're picking out an engagement ring and they, yeah. they're like having to figure out who they're going to pick that morning that they're picking out the diamond ring. So I don't think that's like new to Clayton. I just think that like he didn't really have a skill set and experience. So like, I mean, I it's mean, kind of insulting to Clayton be like, he didn't know better. He's just a little bit like, he's still responsible for taking accountability 100%. I just don't think he has like the social emotional, like, intelligence and like experience in dating to like yeah. know better which I think I'd like to believe he was doing the best that he could with what he had I agree I yeah. think it I think it comes back to that point of emotional intelligence which he lacks and I think there it, it reeks to me of it, it just it feels like a, a, a high school love triangle like mm, yeah. you have multiple people that you're interested in that clearly are interested in you. Yeah. You don't want to preclude anybody too early because you want to leave your options on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tell us more. He's a high school football player. Yeah. The he, jock I, and I, he's I, got three cheerleaders. I, I whatever truly think he is. I mean, he is, he's a, a traditionally handsome guy. I'm sure that he's had he plenty like of. Such a turd. He looks like a thumb. You know those spy kids, like <laughs> oh you know the God. you know the spy kids, like thumbs. Like that's what his face fucking looks like. I'm sorry. He does. He has he, thumb face, but like, it's and he looks like every other bachelor. It made me so uncomfortable in the fantasy suites when, like, I saw him with his shirt off. Like he's a great body. Like don't get me wrong. But I was just but like, without the head. I was like uncomfortable like seeing him like naked. I was like, I just feel like I can't see you se- like sexually. And he's like seeing like Rachel on the bed, and I was like, I don't know. This just feels wrong. I don't know. I'm like watching someone. It's almost like like he's like an adult baby or something. I, I agree. Yeah. It's weird. Be sexualized. I don't know. I mean, that's really <laughs> fucking mean. It's really mean. I would never say this in session. <laughs> but, you know, no, but I, I really think like he. he I hate to, adult baby feels like such a crude term, but I mean, I really feel like he is a, a grown man, deeply lacking. Perhaps any teenager. Sure. You know, and when you don't have experience, you don't have experience and everyone, I think mean, life is not linear. Um, you know, like we all, yeah, go ahead and pour yourself uh, some of that. Yeah, we're going to need, wine. we're going to need some wine. Do for you the rest want of a beer? Oh, pour yeah. it. In. I like it in okay. your beer glass. Yeah, all right. No, you, I mean, more, yeah, get a little bit of the Corona in there. Sure. More, more, more volume. Yes, it's better. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> we're talking shit about Clayton. Anyway, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> Clayton or Colton. Whatever. Whichever They're all this, or Jesse. Uh, oh. I am kind of excited he's gonna host the Bachelorette though. Now, now like, there's something that rubbed off on me about him. I don't know. I, I really what did rub off on you? Per I se? don't know. He's kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but in like a really fun way. Like yeah, I, I, I this is it feels petty to say this, but I his. His uh, bro abandonment of the <laughs> in the like, final two episodes are just been like, here it is. You're going to see it happen. I don't know, folks, was I, it definitely endeared me to him. I, you know, he yeah. was not, in terms of bros, like, I feel like he's a shitty bro. Oh, yeah, that's the he, point. <laughs> I, like, okay, first of all, he was, I mean, I know that obviously, like, Clayton had a lot of lessons to learn, but also I feel like there was no, like, yes, they wanted to hear, like, Clayton's side and everything like that, but, like, there was no kind of, like, 
in his corner, like, growiness to it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that's, if, I don't know, like, if I were in a frat, I would want my bro to, like, have my back, like, to, like, isn't that what bros are all about? I don't know. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of, I mean, for me, that was half the fun of watching, right? It was, like, yeah. that he did kind of a bit. And, like, thinking to Chris Harrison. That's what I was comparing you to. Yeah, I do kind of miss, like, that. He wasn't a bro. Like, I feel like Jesse and Clayton were more peers. But, yeah, like, Chris was, like, the, the, like, kind of cheesy dad on the Mm rom-com in a way. And I was – I mean, I guess I kind of missed that when, like, Taysha and Caitlin were hosting because they made everything about them. Um, And so having, like, at least some sort of, like, distinct personality trait that he got to at least have when he was saying – this is the final rose tonight, like, brought a little bit of life to me. I don't know. Maybe that's extreme. I don't, I don't know. I, there's, there's part of me that appreciates the harsh bent of reality that Jesse brought to it. (laughs) No, I'm I'm serious. You treated these girls like crap. (laughs) Well, just in the sense that, like, if, you know, you know, again, it's, it's The Bachelor. It's a manufactured circumstance. It's a reality TV show. The bubble. That's well and good. But if Clayton were to have found himself impossibly somehow in this circumstance, in the real world, there's no Jesse that's going to come sit next to you on a picturesque, <laughs> on a Rub bench. Rub some dirt on it. <laughs> yeah, like, no saying? one's going to come sit next to you on a bench in Iceland wearing nice leather gloves and be like, oh, I wish. Maybe they God. will. I hope so. Yeah, how do we get that? Yeah. But no, I mean, those are the... Those are the real life circumstances where like, no, you're sitting alone, ruminating in the decisions you've made and you have to choose a path forward. And that doesn't mean it's going to be the correct path or a good path, but like those are decisions you have to make on your own. Well, there may not be a man in nice tailored gloves, but you do have <laughs> friends, right? When you're like dating in relationships. <laughs> they sure. may wear gloves or not. We don't know. <laughs> gloves Intention on the gloves, uh, but you know, like, you do have friends, right? gloves aren't that, like, necessary. That, sometimes they are. I mean, I do, anyway, like <laughs> good excess. I don't know, anyway. But you know, you do have friends that are kind of like help you weigh the options, the pros and cons, be a soundboard to you. I mean, I don't think that you ever date in a vacuum. Well, that's true, that's fair. And I mean, I guess. The host really is the closest thing that the lead has to a friend when they're in that bubble because they can't reach out to their friends. Friend with ulterior motive. (laughs) (laughs) Stab you in the back so they can be entertained by your mayhem. Yeah, but I I think that's, you know, I I think that's kind of the point, though. Right, yeah, right. It's reality. Yeah, and and you can never lose sight of the fact that like again, this it's in a bubble. Like this is this is engineered to provide maximum entertainment to the audience for sure. Um, and it did. And part of me respects that Jesse. I think Jesse played that part relatively transparently. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think there's sure there's there's a more entertaining side of that of having like the audience analog of somebody that will give you like some actual advice or guide you. But there's something visceral and real about Jesse who's being like, hmm, yeah, shit sucks. <laughs> Anyways, I gotta go. You woke me up and we just flew to Iceland after like a 12-hour flight. So good luck, buddy. I'm going back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's something visceral about that that is at the very least interesting and entertaining. Maybe not the best outcome emotionally for all parties involved, but certainly provides a weight to that circumstance that maybe, I mean, that's the whole thing, right? About reality TV is it all feels like a game to a degree. And it, and it is. And it is. That's why I like couldn't fucking understand why like Rachel and Gab, I mean, I get being upset like a week or so, however many days it is before you get engaged. Someone saying that they told someone else they love them. Like I get having feelings about that. I think 100% your emotions are indication of how you experience the situation and are 
serve an illuminating purpose, right? Yeah, 100%. But I just don't got, get why, like, it got so lost on everybody that, like, this is a competition. Mm-hmm. Is it healthy that you're competing for someone's love? Maybe not. But, like, you're, it is about who, like, he sees the best match with and who he thinks he has the highest feelings of love for. And I just don't understand, like, why the fact that this this is a structure of a reality TV show got so lost on everyone. And to that extent, like, I think, like, yeah, he could have, like, handled it way better. And I think, like, been so much more intentional with his actions and his words. But, like, at the end of the day, he's seeing who he has, he's the best fit for to bring home, like, at the end of this. And so, I, yeah, I just, like, it's, it's, it's create, it's structured to create drama. And I guess, like, it's another thing when you're on the side of, like, being a victim of that drama 100%. And that's valid to have human reactions. So that would be weird if they didn't. But, like, it just seemed like, yeah, he's going to sleep with all three, like, obviously. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, he was the only one that didn't really have those human reactions. So stoic and weird. <laughs> Absolutely. She but, said with her mouth full of yeah, almonds. So <laughs> but but I agree with you. I think it's it it was a weird turn for them to decide to litigate the concept of the competition they were in during the last week and multiple times during the last two weeks. It was mentioned, you know, it, it, the the comment was made. You know, this isn't a competition. I shouldn't have to compete. For love, which really brings hollow to me when mm. you're watching the last episode of a reality TV series that is predicated upon competing yeah. for someone's love. I think, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like this feels like the first season in a long time that like that has really been lost. Like that that's really come to, to be such an issue. I mean, I'm thinking back, I guess... We've got Matt and Peter most recently in my memories, and they went great. But um, in terms of, like, Bachelors, I don't remember it being so much of a, like, oh, well, I don't want this to be a competition thing. I don't know. I just think that's a, a, a generally unfair point of view to have totally. on a reality dating competition. Like so, it, it, yeah. it, it just runs, it's, it's completely counter to the entire concept. And... While on one hand, I can fully agree and empathize with the fact that I think at a certain point, you that gets set aside. The competition, when you're down to the last three people, it should be less about the reality TV competition and more getting into like, all right, you have to make some true emotional and relationship-based decisions on this. But I do still think it's unfair to categorically just say like, well, this isn't a competition because it absolutely is a competition. And it, I don't think it's fair to look at it through that lens or maybe not fair is the wrong term. I think you're doing yourself a disservice to look at it in that light because that's exactly what it is. And you're setting yourself up for disappointment to set that expectation for yourself. Again, while you sit on the couch in LA next to Jesse Palmer while he's like asking you how you felt while a crowd of people behind you are cheering and giving like camera reactions. I have signs. I love all his like leading questions. Like, so did you feel haunted? Yeah. (laughs) She said you were haunted. Did you feel haunted? haunted? Oh. Um, You made a good point earlier, Brooke. Um, Just some like, and you obviously have more insight to this than we do. Um, I mean, I guess I do. Uh, consensual non-monogamy and like that kind of just really being the premise of the show yeah I think that um there's elements of consensual mono- non-monogamy <laughs> um in this show but you're applying it to all monogamy values and when people are in any type of arrangement of consensual and non-monogamy what they usually like come in for is jealousy number one as opposed to compersion but also um feelings of devaluation or demotion when there's like a new partner like brought into the polycule or brought into the arrangement of the relationships and here right like they're all entering the show consensually they know this person's gonna be dating other people but 
like you said, like it is to see who is going to end up to be the most like prized, the most valued. And like in, I mean, it's different in every consensual non-monogamy arrangement, but you value each connection in its own right for its uniqueness, who the person is and valuing yeah. them in, in the relationship in its own right. And like here, yeah, they're compartmentalizing. He says he's compartmentalizing these relationships. But like, you know, the point is not to compete like who's the best when you're in a situation where you're dating multiple people. Um, and so it's like they're applying all these like monogamy ideas. And so you're naturally going to have people say like, okay, I feel devalued because I think this connection is like stealing my light. So what am I going to do when I don't feel okay and I'm not being valued and accepted and you're making me feel like I'm not good enough because I think something else is valued more than me? I'm going to make that other person feel like they're not okay and like criticize them and create drama with them. That's why the women create so much drama, right? Mm. Um, to make themselves feel better like they're okay by making someone else feel not okay. And it's just like yeah, you are competing for who's going to win as the best relationship, whereas in consensual non-monogamy, yes, you prioritize, but I think you value them, the relationships, for their own uniqueness, and it's not about, like, who's the best person. So that leads me to another question, and I think that this came up multiple times in the last few episodes, but, I'm Brooke, I'm very curious on your thought on this. Gabby made a comment, I think, at least two or three times, that she didn't want to be judged on being loved the most, but being loved for who she was. Mm. And I'm curious mm. if you think that those two things are mutually exclusive. And maybe let me explain a little bit more. Can you not rank those things? Can you not love somebody for who they are and assess them against other people to decide and again, I I think loving someone the most is kind of a dirty term because I don't think it's a very exact... It, it, it's like your connections are different. Yeah. It, exactly. But I think as human beings, like, do we not weigh and rank those things in every decision that we make? It, can you not look at somebody for who they are and love somebody for who they are and not place them in some kind of rank on, like, who you love the most while thinking about those things? Oof. Yeah, I think you can have, like, deeper connections with other people, right? Like, I I think you kind of find that even when you're dating, like, monogamously. I cannot speak after three <laughs> glasses of wine. Um, monogamous, I, you know what I'm saying. Um, right? Because, like, you date different people, like, and find out, like, that you have deeper feelings for someone else, right? You break up, you have a new relationship. I think there's no, like, there's no, like, recipe book. There's no, like, rule book. Like, I'm sure that, like, you could kind of develop connections with two people at the same time and decide, like, okay, like, do we want to make this and all date each other? What do we want to do? And so I think it's, like, different based on the situation. But, like, yeah, to your point, like, I think, like, you can date multiple people and have a deeper connection, with one person over another, 100%. Yeah. But you're still loving them for who they are. Yeah, I think you still appreciate the relationship in its own right. Like, this relate right? Because, like, no one person, that's the whole thing, is, like, no one person can provide all and meet all of your needs. That's right. why you have different friends, right? You have your friends you go out with, you have your <laughs> friends, and maybe they overlap, right? Like, they can totally overlap, but maybe you have your friends that you do certain hobbies with. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of... Similarly, like no one person is going to meet all of your needs. So certain relationships are going to meet needs that another cannot just because people are different can't like have everything that you would possibly need in all of one person. Yeah. Why are you staring at me? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> saying what you have to say. I don't know. Um, no, I mean, I think, I think those are super valid points and like... I think, I mean, not to get into, like, Gabby's psyche, but, like, we had talked, to about her, like, kind of abandonment issues, and mm -hmm. I think there was definitely probably some stuff in her past that was, like, you're not loving me for me. Um, assuming that Clayton does actually, right, Clayton, yeah, Clayton loved her. <laughs> I'm going to call him Colton at some point. Um, assuming that he really did love her, 
I think he did love her for who she was. She just wasn't Susie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I don't think that it's... I don't think that's wrong. I, I agree. Yeah. I don't think that's an indictment necessarily of Clayton. And again, this is or independent of... Any uh, of them. Or any of them. And this is independent of the poor choices that, that he made. I'm just saying... I, that comment stuck in my head and clearly because we're talking about it right now. But But that to me felt like a false equivalency on her part of... It's... You can you can base your relationship and how you feel on somebody on on its own merits, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, when you're in the mix with two other people, your the human psyche is going to you have to put those people in some kind of priority, and and I and I guess the point I'm getting at is that that I think that's completely independent of loving someone for who they are. I think you can. Take somebody at face value, you can accept them and love them the way that they are, how they are, who they are, but against your own values and choices and the things you want, they're going to fall somewhere in, in that hierarchy. And and so, again, that's well, just... That, uh, that kind of speaks to our point that we were talking about earlier before all this, is like that's what sets adult relationships apart from, you know, relationships we're dating more casually, relationships mm. in your early 20s, yes. it's like... You can have chemistry and have genuine feelings of love for tons of people and get along well and feel yeah. like you don't get sick of them and they're your best friend and you have great physical chemistry, emotional chemistry. But at the end of the day, if there are certain lifestyle choices that are important to you, certain life values that are important to you, and whether this person will be able, at the end of the day, to show up for you in the ways that you need to be supported – when you're going through tough times, can that person do that? Do they have the social emotional intelligence? They have the Mm -hmm. capabilities, they have the same values. Um, Are they gonna be able to support you? And that is what sets apart life partners from someone I dated in my 20s. Agreed. Or or whatever age, obviously we dated many ages, 50s, (laughs) 60s, 70s, 80s. We're just 30s, but. (laughs) Um, well, and I think, too, like, when you're talking about, like, prioritizing, I mean, not to relate this to work, but it's in my brain, um, but it's, like, when there's all this stuff coming at you in, like, life, there's always, like, a ton of shit coming at you. At the end of the day, you have to choose what you're going to do first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to use whatever method it is that you figure out what's important. And, I mean, I think that he did that, I guess, to the best of his abilities, eventually, when she came back to him. Um, Do you guys, I mean, do we want to talk about predictions for, is that mean? Or, like, would you have given him another chance if you were Susie? Ooh, what would we do if we were Susie? I'll go first if nobody else wants <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, go for it. Take it. So one thing I will point out, and I think this bears, like, there's some there's some weight to this. Um, all three of the finalists, Rachel, Susie, all, they all had one common thread that they repeated that I think if it was one of them or two of them, you could discount, but all three of them being consistent in this point. None of them felt any malice in Clayton's approach. And and I think and I think that bears some pointing out that and it goes back to what we talked about earlier that it's it's very emotionally immature of him to do what he did. Um but to the point of like will Clayton and Susie last? I don't think Susie is is foolish or dumb no. or short-sighted or impulsive and I think that the decision she made to come back and give him another chance, like she clearly weighed that decision and, and arrived at that after a lot of thought. And I actually think earlier tonight, I even said that I maybe didn't see them lasting that long, but the longer we've talked about this, the more I really think, I think there may be a reasonable chance that that relationship lasts because one thread that, that follows through through 
everything in the last what two or three episodes with with the finalists it, he really never faltered on how he felt about Susie and again That's true. the way he arrived at that very flawed and very inconsiderate of both yeah. of both Rachel and I'm now forgetting Gabby Gabby, Gabby. <laughs> it's, so, it's so bad Gabby but it, I I think that that was a consistent I mean he he never strayed from that and I think if you're Susie and you're watching back through again if you put aside all of the catastrophic <laughs> choices that he made there's something to be said about the fact that he he came back to the same conclusion in the end he never really faltered away from that he handled the circumstance with Susie poorly when mm-hmm. he admitted that he had been with with both Gabby and Rachel but I I definitely think that there's something there from Clayton's perspective. Clearly, Susie felt it too because she ended up back yeah. on that couch sitting next to him. I think if he is able to grow, truly grow, not grow the way that he claimed to grow through the show, but like if there's true character and emotional growth that he can experience after everything that happened on the show... Mm-hmm. I could see them staying together for a long, long time. I could see that working out and and being a real relationship. Also Maybe some therapy. So <laughs> oh, so much therapy. <laughs> I, I'm also just like not in the circumstances of the show anymore. It's so much easier. I think yeah. like Clayton was like quote unquote like learning on the job. He's also like hasn't really been in a relationship since college, and no one really knows whether that was a serious relationship or or not. And also, this is the first time he's, like, dated multiple people at the same time. And, like, I really do go back to just when you are starting to develop feelings for several people or just any kind of emotional situation where your life would go in very different directions based on the decision that you make and you feel all those things so strongly. It's really hard to separate them and weigh out which feeling to go with because you're feeling a lot of things strongly all at the same time. It can be really confusing and overwhelming and hard not to shut down that like, I do believe that, you know, obviously there's intention versus impact, right? Like Mm -hmm. even though you don't intend to hurt someone, if you do like the fact that you did hurt them, that's what matters at the same time. Like I think that he was doing the best that he could, even though he didn't do well. Um, You know, like, I think it was just really hard to sift through all the really complicated feelings that, even though we we simplify him, and he seems (laughs) maybe, like, you know, a simple guy, right? But we don't really know the real Clayton Wright's TV. So, like, I think that now not having all of those extra factors which make it really difficult for someone who is not getting a lot of coaching on how to do this and has never done dating multiple people um i think it it just has such a better fighting chance and uh i think he you know has genuine feelings for her and if he can continue to show up for her i think like behind the scenes like they can have enough conversations that are healing about like wow that was such a hard experience on both sides like glad we're not there glad we can like if we continue to connect like maybe something can grow from here two things one i i want to touch on timelines because i think this is an important piece that we're talking about from the end of the show to the live finale it was what two three months yeah. Time span? Yeah. Which, it's not for like two months, right? I think it's two to three. Yeah. Uh, but I I'm, think they had referenced three at one point. But yeah. It's and, something and like that. And that's the yeah. show itself, right? Three months of... And, uh, and he said it. Well, been from, from like, I think the end of the show to the finale. So at some point there's overlap where they're watching the show. I think. And I think, I think, I think right? he said he'd been dating Susie for four months now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, that I, just as a point of fact, something to call out, I think that's a... That's a significant period of time outside of that circumstance to foster that relationship. And none of us are privy to anything that's happened there. But clearly, there's been some growth and development that's taken place. I mean, the one thing he talks about at the end of the finale is, like, he sold his house. He left his yeah, job. Yeah, that was... That's those are actions talking for sure. Yeah. I think those are... 
I mean, I can, I can speak as, I mean, I don't think this is exclusive to men, but like as a man to leave your job, sell your home and move across the country for somebody, that's not something anybody takes lightly. And, yeah. and I think that certainly speaks, there's something that's spoken there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so wanted to point that out. The second question, and this is just more of a hypothetical if any of the three of us were in the circumstance he was in at the end with those three, I mean, three women or three men, whatever the mm. circumstance is, do you think you could have made the same type of, under that kind of pressure, do you think it's possible any of us could have made those same types of errors just yeah. under that time compression, under the, the, I mean, not even just, time compression but having producers standing behind you pressuring you to make those oh, decisions oh and prompting you and just like manipulating you mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and, and again or, I'm not saying clear, I'm like, perfect no 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 <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm not at all trying to absolve Clayton of anything he made very dumb choices I just the more we talk through this the more I think like under under that circumstance something that's so alien that's something that nobody in their normal life yeah. ever goes through yeah well i mean like every day like he's getting new information about all these people like you are you have a certain person or two or three maybe i don't know mm -hmm. on your mind um and they have good impressions and you think oh these people could be really people i connect with and then the next day you have a group date or one-on-one -on -one and you have a really good conversation with someone that you didn't expect like they always say like don't write people off you know yeah. other people might surprise you you never know and then it kind of changes and you're having all these like moments of people that are like sometimes really wonderful and so i think you're just gathering more and more information and filling in that picture of who someone is a little bit each time you see them and so i think things do shift around so much yeah, yeah. i mean and to your point too like he he is in a way puppeted right and any lead in the show any contestant rather too um they are kind of like little puppeteers for the producers yeah. um and yeah i mean obviously like we're not perfect but yeah it is what it is um and we get to kind of judge him and make fun of him because he's sure. the one on tv and, doing uh, it yeah but, and that's, and that's um, the part of reality tv but <laughs> right I, I right i think it's important to not lose sight of the fact that like that's an extraordinary circumstance for yeah. any person to be put in Men and women included, all of the women on that show were put in. I mean, yeah, yeah to be they were, yeah, put into such a a pressure cooker of mm -hmm. expectations, yeah, and dreams and hopes and things. Yeah, there, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of input and stimuli that normal people are never going to experience in their lives. Thank God, uh, absolutely. And I I think I mean that's such a great point of like. Yeah, we're here talking a lot of shit about Clayton, but like, do I actually believe believe like half the things that I'm saying? Like, you know, to some extent, I'm like, right now, like we're having fun with it, and we're just going off the fact that we know we don't know who this person is, and like, it's easy to kind of like laugh at reality TV, and that's like why people watch it. But I think also like that's why I respect Susie's decision so much to say mm -hmm. at the end, I love you so much. I think we have a great connection, mm -hmm. but I think that. I'm not in a place where I would ideally want to be before I agree to a lifetime partnership with someone. And I know that. Yeah. I, and I know that this is like a special circumstance that's manipulated and there's all these like pressures and emotions are running so high. And like, I haven't had enough time to process the timeline of the show is like yeah. so fast. And so I think that was her. And finally, like finally the final contestants kind of acknowledging like, if they had time to process and cool off, yeah. what different conclusions would they come to? I mean, like, when you're upset and emotions are high, like, right? Prefrontal cortex, a part of your brain that does rational thinking. And they're sleep deprived. Decision and... making literally turns off like Wi-Fi. So it's like, it's <laughs> not a good decision or time to be making these calls. And, you know, to take that space, I mean, they can still be together forever, if she doesn't say yes in Iceland. Also, I felt yes. so bad for her getting out of the car. Like somebody gave her like a little like 
for her shoulder. I'm uh, like, can someone not give her a full length fur coat? Like, is ABC like really struggling? Like, come on, we did a helicopter yacht day. We can't give her a jacket. They always do that though. Did you uh, like Katie's dress got ruined when she was walking to her proposal? Like, they fuck with the women in these shows. <laughs> like, yeah. whether or not the woman is the lead. Just I, saying. I do also want to just say as as another point for Susie. Yeah. I think her her composure and response mm -hmm. at at the what would you even call that? Not even a rose ceremony, the ring ceremony that didn't happen. Whatever. I mean it was oh, yeah, yeah kind of it's the, the final, final rose. rose. But, but her her <laughs> love it. Cheers. Her composure and level headedness at mm -hmm. at that approach, I mean, is beyond commendable. Yeah. And so I, it it makes it very hard for me to fault that at the end of this, she came back and and gave him another chance because that was not an impulsive decision on her part. I mean, she was very level headed, methodical. She's not she, stupid. She stayed calm, and I I really respect her for that. And I think like originally when. She, at the original breakup, when she kind of brought that up and he was, you know, my original impression of his reaction was not that he was, people were shitting on him of like, oh, it's like prom and he can't have sex. So like, that's what he's mad about. And I kind of, no. I don't really felt like that. I, I didn't no. get that impression from him. I think he was just like, like blindsided, especially because he knew that like maybe he was leaning towards picking her so he would have like accommodated that had that been a value that he had known about her. But also, it's, I think it just brings up the question, like, when do you bring up those types of conversations and values with someone? It's so hard. Like, how many, like, I've been, definitely been in dating situations, like, fairly recently of, you know, seeing someone for, like, months, month and a half, catching feels, and then saying some, like, thinking to yourself, like, oh, I'm catching genuine feelings for someone. I'm scared after just a month, month and a half, if I'm catching feelings that are more intense than they're catching feelings, should I say, hey, wanna make sure we're on the same page? Like, are you sleeping around? Or yeah. should I start dating other people to make sure that I'm not getting invested too quickly if this other person isn't? And when do you bring that up? I think that's a thought of, that's a question and thought that like a lot of people go through. When you bring those things up. And there's no right answer. Well, either. I think it, it goes back to, I'm going to plug a different podcast now, but I mean, Jared Freed, they, they talked about this. My hero. Yeah. On, it's not an episode without mentioning him at least yeah. once. <laughs> but, but I mean, they talk about exactly this of like the scenario of, you know, dating somebody, not necessarily casually, but dating somebody without labels or titles. And, you know, finding out a month or two in that, like, they're mm -hmm. still on the apps, they're still talking to people. And if that's mm -hmm. not a conversation you guys have had previously, what's the reasonable expectation when right. that information comes out? Yeah, I think that, like, people are not mind readers. And I think, like, it's better to have, in my opinion, like, I totally get, they made that point on Betcher, right? Like, if that's a deal breaker for you, you feel like you shouldn't have to tell people like not to sleep with someone else like days or a week before you get engaged. Like if they're your person, like they will, sh if you have that value, they'll share the same, that value. You want to see if that's actually a value of theirs. Um, bef like to see what happens. It, I totally get that. You feel like you shouldn't have to say that. It also just feels a little bit like testing because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, you would hope that if you brought that up, like, hey, this is how I like to date. If this is not how you like to date, that's cool. I think we're not a match. Maybe we shouldn't waste each other's time. And I think that, like, you know, like, back in college, like, I definitely dated someone for a long time. And I was trying to be that, like, classic, cool, like, chill girl who's like, I'm just going to let it develop organically and let it be whatever. And I don't think, like, yes, I totally believe in that. Um, but at the same time, like if you are developing genuine feelings for someone and you're hoping for a certain outcome, I think you kind of put yourself in a vulnerable emotional risk if you let it go for 
like, okay, in this scenario, it was a matter of weeks, but like maybe in real life, a couple more months, months mm -hmm. where you're invested and you have no idea what other page someone is on, people are not mind readers and un unvoiced needs cannot be met. And I think yeah. that like, talking about your dating style is something that's important so that you're on the same page. And it's like, if people can't have those conversations, then maybe they like, shouldn't be dating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so, well, they're not easy conversations to no, have. Like, they're, they're not easy conversations to have. And I think that like, right, there's different ways of like approaching them. And it's not like you don't have to make it like such a heated, heavy, like conversation, but you know, just kind of, you know, bringing it up like a little bit when you're kind of starting to realize like oh I'm really catching feels for this person and if that's some if that is a value you have like if they're sleeping with other people it's gonna fuck me up then like props you should say something before you get <laughs> fucked up you're putting yourself in emotional risk yeah Marie can I can I blow up your spot a little bit here yeah in a good way because this is a this is a good point well it's it's one of the benefits of watching The Bachelor with somebody you're interested in. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but I think Brooke brings up a good point, and sorry for all of the audience listening to this if they don't know, but, like, we're dating, and... hey -o. <laughs> but they, it, That was announced on the last episode. Oh, I'm um, not Not your name, you because... Well, now you know. To, I was trying to protect, protect the innocent, but... No. Oh, it's <laughs> over like, now. No, but, but to that point of, like, intentionality and conversation, like, I mean, what? It's It's been, like, three months? Yeah, something like months. that. Time, I, don't ask me time right now. No, I know. Time is <laughs> Time is, time is really time. hard. But to your point of, like, those conversations don't need to be, like, this whole, like, come to Jesus referendum, like... Yeah, you like, need to, like, say, I need to talk to you about something very serious right no, now. Like, yeah, like, yeah. One thing, a big thing that comes to mind is, like, talking about, like, dating apps. And, like, this yeah. was, like, a month and a half or so ago. Like, we were just spending time one night and, like, mentioned to each other. She was like, yeah, like, I I deleted them. I'm, I'm done. I don't... I'm, I don't need them anymore. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the same place. And that, and... I, I just think that's something that's such an overblown piece of like, oh, like, are there other people that are still in the mix? Are you still, you know, are you still looking and talking? Like, I, that doesn't necessarily need to be this huge, like, serious conversation. Yeah, I yeah. think it's, and, and when it's somebody that you have that connection with, that you have that same communication style with, it's just like, hey, I'm done with this. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think dating apps really make it, um, I think they make it difficult for a lot of people because some people have this like, oh, well, like there's always like, you know, there's one a, of the first, there's, there's another swipe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like they're not on The Bachelor with fucking 30 women, women right. like fighting over them, but there's still something that's like easy, right? Um, but... I, I mean, obviously, like, agree that it doesn't need to be this whole big-ass thing. Also, I think a lot of people look for a specific time frame on it. Um, like, it has to be at this point, or... If you don't tell me within four weeks. Yeah, then, over. like, it's over. Yeah. Like, it, you know, every like, everybody is looking for rules on this shit. And, like, there isn't rules. There's rules on The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, like, there aren't comes, rules in real life. Yeah, when it comes to real human relationships, when it reaches that point, I think, again, if we're speaking in the lens of adult relationships, <laughs> like, when the mutual consenting parties arrive at that decision, like, that's a conversation you should be able to yeah. casually have. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like, so many things can be squashed and, like, dealt with if you would just, like, actually come and be, like, straight up with someone. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you're when you're not and things, like, kind of, like, build up or, like, it things can go south real fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. you well, know, it's because like, it breeds resentment. Those yeah, things right? that you don't mention, it, they, they fester and they metastasize and they become bigger issues than they ever were in the first place. And they're saddled with these personal emotions, your own projections on those things that 
make them ten times worse. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just like what kind of timeline that you like to date? Like, you know, it's. I think it's like, it's common to, you know, date more than one person in the first like few weeks or even the first few months. I think of dating someone before you end up in a committed relationship. And so I think it kind of like if you're not communicating your feelings about how invested you are or the feelings that you have and you don't think the person really is developing but they secretly are, they're just not telling you and then, you know, it's like, it's so easy to make assumptions and so I think it's like if you were to just go to that person and be like, hey, I dig you, I'm like, and you curious, like, I want this to be organic and see what happens, but I would yeah. love to see where this goes. Like, I genuinely, like, I dig you, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, like, it can be, like, silly. It doesn't have to be so serious. But, you know, I think that can prevent so much and then also, like, squash so much that can fester when you do that. And it's, you well, know, it's sad when that doesn't work out. And I think that's kind of what happened to Susie, to take it back. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Especially, I mean, and in that, like, bubble that they are in, like, she had a week, I think, um, but week, two yeah. other dates, two other women who went on dates before her, she was the last person, she was a mess, well, like, and not watching only, her. Not only a week, but a week alone with yeah. no other yeah. outlet, and nothing with to distract no cell with. phone. Going, yeah. going down, like, the Just rabbit, why? going oh. down the rabbit hole of making assumptions and, like, our brains don't like having uncertainty. They don't like having no. gaps in the narrative. And so when we don't know all the pieces of the story, we come up with pieces of the story. And she has so many things to like make like assumptions off of based on group dates, based Gabby's on like, hair, oh, based, based on, on, <laughs> based on, on very things. real signals and things you're seeing yeah. from other mm -hmm. people. And like, so she's like, oh, does that mean this? And then having so much time to think about it and thinking of ways to confirm it that aren't necessarily like based on like behavioral things or like actual proof or you yeah. overanalyze everything of everything course, yeah. like when you get into that state so i mean i can understand where she was yeah. coming from for and sure i saw that a uh, previous cast member i don't know if it was ari r.i.p ari that was a <laughs> terrible season wow but, yeah you know ari might be on par with layton um <laughs> yeah but he was annoying oh uh, he was so he would get I love that to everything anyone said. He had zero personality. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, it's true. Ari. It's true. Also, he, he's, he was a have a cake and eat it too um, mm. lead as well because he ended up uh, with Lauren, his second runner up, uh, which is an interesting hot take, but they seem very happy, so that's all that matters. <laughs> um, but uh, there was a point. I don't know what it was. Ari's annoying. There was something before that. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm thinking of is Ari's annoying, so yeah. Well, well. And I um, did watch enough Bachelor recaps to see him be like, oh, love that. <laughs> love that. Which is the most non-committal thing you could uh, say to someone's response. <laughs> it's like, so he's like, well, it's like when people, with that joke about when people call you baby so they don't mess up, like, the names. It's uh -huh. like, he loves his go-to response, but he's like, wait, did you tell me that, or did someone else tell me something similar? I don't know. No, I don't know. Oi. Um, well, I say, before we wrap up, what are we, what are we looking forward to, if anything? with this next season of The Bachelorette with Rachel and Gabby. Almost forgot her name now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to um, just seeing how they incorporate the mistakes that Le that Clayton <laughs> made and then just like correcting and being more intentional with um, kind of their decisions and their actions and like having more empathy for the contestants on their seasons. Mm. Um, and also I hope and like cannot wait for more of this like Gabby fire. <laughs> she really felt like she like I love that she's like super silly and ding batty or like whatever. <laughs> but I when the moments where like at that rose ceremony with her and Rachel and then again she was like in that breakup final breakup conversation, which I was having like two for one jokes in my head when that was happening. Um but I'm excited to just see her just like be confident in herself and see and see the other side of her. And with Rachel, I hope that like I felt in her breakup with Clayton, like she 
was kind of calling him out that like she never gave up and it's gonna haunt him. Yeah. And, like he made mistakes, but I think also she was like trying to talk sense into him, like this is not right. Like you you should be make you should be making a different decision. And so I kind of am excited to see her like um just to see how she handles things. I hope that she's over it enough to like go into it because like the way that that breakup happened, I kind of wonder if she's like for lack of a better way to put it, like, quote, unquote, ready to date. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that'll be kind of an interesting take. But... Her dad's not ready for her to date. Oh, <laughs> I don't think her dad is ever going to be ready for that her to date. He's going to have a heart attack. Uh, yeah. Um, Old tone. He's um, not excited. I'm, I will give a maybe a slightly contrarian point of view. I, I predict that both Gabby and Rachel... And again, I want to be clear that this is not like a ooh, taste of your own medicine thing. I think they're both going to experience going through this process on their own. Some of the same pressures that Clayton experienced. And, and yeah. I think that there will be, again, not, not, they, he's not going to be absolved of his poor choices, no. but I, but I think they'll realize some of the unique pressures of the situation because they're about to be put and it might prove them a little like hypocritical i, I wouldn't even say hypocritical i think it, it'll just give them maybe some perspective on how he made the choices that he did yeah and 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 maybe give a little illumination to the fact that like a little and, and again they, a little empathy empathy yeah. i think definitely and and to be clear like they were all very adamant that like he didn't make these decisions out of malice. I think yeah. they're yeah. just going to see how how muddy those waters can get and how difficult when you're put into this pressure cooker of a situation with all of these different people all vying yeah. for your affection, all telling you that they want this future with you. Like, I think that, I mean, and none of us have been in this circumstance, but I can only imagine how. Wow. How <laughs> many, you know about my life. I don't know how many you no. <laughs> I do think it's sad to me that, I mean, I know it's reality TV, obviously, you know, we love the trash, but um, <laughs> I am sad that they're just not setting them up for success. Like, mm -hmm. I really hope they don't make them date the same guys. I'm really sad they're not giving them their own seasons. I yeah. think that that is just going to create so much, like, heartbreak and not set them up for success, and I... Wish that they like cared about the people on the show a little bit more, mm. and to me, it's just evident that they don't. Yeah, and it's just like it, it's a little bit thinly veiled that this is not about find. I mean, no, it's not, not about no. finding like your person that's going to work out. And I wish they would just like create a little bit more of that facade, or like at least like you know, yeah. like actually, like yes. I mean, I think there's gonna be drama no matter what. I think people are gonna get into, you know, fights and start drama and between the contestants no matter what. So I think, like, if you could just, like, give them a set of factors where there's, like, a little bit of hope, like, I just feel, I feel bad for them. And so yeah. I think there'll be a lot of drama to be super juiced and fun to watch. And I also just feel bad for them. Like, it just seems like a bad situation. Can I give you my, like, yes. wild, like, this will never happen, but this will yes. be great. I would love to see both Gabby and Rachel get their own pool of 30 contestants. Yes. And when contestants get voted off, instead of leaving, they get swapped <gasps> to the other person's pool of contestants. Oh, that would be so fun. That would be interesting. I, I think, like, the only thing, like, I think like more, one, one factor, like, if they're going to date the same, if they're going to, like, have the same pool and then, like, maybe be divided into, like, which bachelorette they're dating – that there's some rule about, like, you can't choose which bachelorette you're going to, like, you can't, like, choose Gabby on night one or Rachel on night one, and then, like, three days in, you're like, ooh, actually, Rachel's super hot or Gabby's super hot, so I'm going to switch. And obviously, they're not going to do that because it's going to create so much juicy drama. Yeah, that's going to pit them against but, each other. I mean, uh, that's a kind of the whole point, right? So you say that, but the producers literally right now are, like, salivating and rubbing their hands together. Thinking about how they're going to the cross over there. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's, like, that's, like, why I'm kind of annoyed that they're both going to be in the same season, too. Because it was, like, last year having two separate seasons of The Bachelorette. A, that was a lot. Um, and B, it was kind of, like, Michelle was overshadowed by Katie or vice versa, depending on how you look at it. 
And so it's like they don't really get their own year to like shine. Yeah. And I don't know why they, they're only doing it with The Bachelorette. They're not doing it with The Bachelor. Like they, they could have found, I mean, honestly, they could have found other people from either Michelle or Katie's season. They could have done two Bachelors, one from each for this, this season. And instead, they chose literally the worst person that nobody asked for. Uh, and nobody got <laughs> five minutes of airtime. There were so many people. Nobody that, knew him. There were so many people that, like, could have been good. Yeah. Which, I mean. I can't think of any of them. Right I would have loved to see Rodney. Back, but at the time, I thought. It was good. I, Rodney, the real underdog. Oh, like, God, no, no, no. I, I, oh. I'm, I, he's a sweetie pie, but I didn't really want to see him have uh, that. I don't think really, he could handle it, but, but it would have been precious. There were there were people at the time that I thought would have been really good candidates, and now I'd have to look at the cast list from <laughs> remember, but sorry. Oh, man. Well, on that note, um, anybody want to make any plugs before uh, we wrap? I will just say, I was thinking about this, um, that... None of this was my professional opinion. <laughs> and Disclaimer. These are not things I would have said in a professional capacity. Also, I've had three glasses of wine and talking shit. So <laughs> I just want to say this was from a talking shit perspective as opposed to, um, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's disclaimer. Just, yeah, disclaimer. Let's disclaim that. But it was super fun. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> And any final words? No, I have no plugs, but I I genuinely enjoyed like digging as deep as possible into the season. Oh, and we, we dug, baby. We oh, dug. Oh, we dug. Oh, we, we dug. dug. But I, I think it's 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 a very interesting like it's it's a great character exercise, and I think if there's <laughs> anything people can take away, like looking into yourself again, kind of like we talked about of like what what would you do had you been placed in this circumstance is a useful thought exercise because this mm -hmm. is an extraordinary circumstance that most people not even most people 99.9% .9 of people will yeah. never experience yeah it's it, it's a i think it's a good introspective look at like how you approach mm -hmm. values and relationships how you speak to people that you care about how you communicate intent mm -hmm. i I yeah. just, I think there's, it's, re, it's sure, it's reality TV, it's pulp, it's fun, we love yeah. to talk shit, but like, there's a lens you can look at against yourself yeah. in all of this, and I think that's a, it's, yeah. if there's a value in it beyond just watching it on TV and drinking most of a box of wine, while <laughs> like, that's, that's the journey is like, sure, hopefully you enjoy it, hopefully we sit here and all watch it and go, oh wow ridiculous but like at the end of the day reflect on yourself a little bit and think like how are you approaching and showing up to circumstances like this yeah. and hopefully you're not in a position where you're dealing with 30 <laughs> people that you have to choose between but if it makes you make a little bit more informed decisions about that one person or two people or whatever it is that like you're dealing with hopefully yeah. there's some intentionality behind that so and that's my plug there my you go drop I, I am I'll just like as like a, I also like I think there are situations like a lot of questions that we like talked about that anybody can relate to in terms of dating like when do you tell people the important things and like XYZ but I think with like Anthony right like you don't have to we don't 